Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jose Vega and in this episode we're going to cover uh, sort of the basics of 3D code for concept art and how I normally use it for my everyday uh, work. Now I do not know everything about 3D code. Um, I'm for sure not an expert but um, I use certain things that are uh, a little bit easier to deal with than in Blender, like just normal sculpting, stencils, and, and that sort of thing. And so I prefer that to do that in 3D code. And so I just want to give you sort of like a basic overview of the software and uh, some of the things that I use um, just so that it can help you out to get started. Now, when you open it up, uh, you get this sort of um, window here. Uh, that you have multiple options here. Um, I normally just go straight to voxel sculpting, uh, just because that's the uh, way we we are gonna sculpt here. Uh, and there's you know all this all this stuff that I just normally don't use, um, just because I don't need it. But if you go to voxel sculpting, uh, you get this option to either start with a blank canvas file uh, to import a model, uh, and then you get all this options for different matches to start with. It really doesn't matter what you choose here. Um, you can always get this stuff from the menu, uh, but we're gonna start with just a normal, just a plain old um, canvas here. Now to navigate, you're gonna see here that we got this big viewport here. This is gonna be a 3D viewport. Um, on the left here, you're gonna see all our tools and brushes, right? And you can scroll down here to get all this. You can also press uh, on the window here, press the space bar, and then you get all these um, uh, brushes here as well um, that are the ones on the here. So normally I don't, I don't find them here. I just press space bar and then I find them here. Right? So this is how I access my, uh, my brushes. Now on the right here, um, I want you to pay attention to the first three windows here. So this top one here, you're gonna see uh, that it has a couple of, of uh, panels here. You got brushes, strips, uh, splines, models, and all these um, other ones. Uh, mainly we're gonna be concentrating on brushes. And here you're gonna see some default brushes, but then you can also import your own alpha for brushes. So for example, the rock here uh, on JR Rocks, I imported some of the um, alphas for some rocks texture. We're gonna we're gonna see how we can use this later. But um, if you want to create a new one for you know whatever brush you want to import, you gotta click this little plus button, and that will create a new tab. Uh, you can name it and import your um, your alphas, pressing this uh, plus sign here on the library here. All right. So uh, we're gonna be jumping from you know from my default ones to uh, you know, just the ones that I have imported here. Now on this one, um, we're gonna pay attention to shaders and also the main one is gonna be stencils. Now we're gonna go over stencils later, but um, here the same way you can create new tabs for whatever type of stencils you wanna import. And the same way as the brushes here, you can import them by pressing the plus sign here. Now this one, which says sculpt tree, this is pretty much going to be layers, your layers. I don't pay attention too much to this layers thing um, area here. We won't get into that, but here is pretty much going to be your layering. Now the way 3D code works is that whatever layer you have selected, if you create a object, it's gonna be created in that layer. So right now it doesn't matter because we only have one. But um, as your models get more complicated, more objects and more sculpts, um, you're gonna be wanting to import and create new uh, pieces of mesh um, specifically to certain layers. So just keep that in mind here. Now for the layers, you can hide the visibility here. You can actually um, make a sort of like ghost mode, which is gonna be like transparent, sort of like a reference type of thing. And the V, uh, we won't get into this because um, this is going to change. If I press this, it's going to change to surface um, sculpting, which, as you can see here, is sort of changes my tools here. We want to make sure that we are on V for voxel. 
And you can create new layers by just pressing, you know, add a new layer here. And then you got, you know, duplicates and delete and all the normal, normal stuff. So this is what we're gonna mainly gonna be using here. Um, we're gonna always keep it on the sculpt um, tab here. You got multiple tabs for multiple things that you can do in 3D code, like actually rendering, you can do UVs, retopo, um, do some paint on top of your models. Um, but I normally don't do that, so we just won't go over that. And then you have your normal standard um, main tab here, view, symmetry, geometry. And you know a lot of these stuff we're just gonna cover as we need them and as we go through. But this is sort of like the standard. Now to navigate on your viewport, um, I'm using a Cintiq uh, a tablet, which is very recommended if you're gonna sculpt instead of using your mouse, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm pressing Alt and by just clicking and dragging, I can rotate. Um, on my pen, I have one of the buttons to set up as a right click. And so if I press Alt and right click, I can zoom in and out, right? And for panning, I normally go up here and this is some of the options that we're gonna be using, but if I go to this one to the uh, sort of this uh, cross shape, like I can actually click there and hold and just pan my scene in here. Right, so rotation, I got some rotation, I got um, just normal zooming it out, and then my panning here. Now, some of these options, um, I normally don't use them because I don't need them, but um, here you can adjust your lighting on your scene. You can change the rotation of the light, how bright it is, how blur you want it. It's actually using an image for lighting. I normally don't want to see that just so it's not so um, distracting. And um, over here, you can hide and show your 3D grid. You don't want to use it. And these two are pretty important. So the this little house icon will bring your camera towards the center or the main source. Just in case you get lost in the world, in the 3D world, if you have a big scene and you want to go back to the center, you can just click there and it will bring you back in. And this this uh, cube one is going to toggle between perspective and orthographic. Now, for a lot of things, we want to be in orthographic mode, uh, which is this version with the blue set of background. And there is no really perspective distortion when you're in this mode. And this is great for doing specific things. And a lot of people actually like to sculpt in this mode uh, because they don't have that perspective distortion. And so it's easier for them to actually see the model. Um, and if you click it again, we go back to normal perspective. So you're gonna see that we're gonna go back and forth a lot from uh, perspective and orthographic, uh, but that's where you can actually access that. Now, let's say I want to start creating something and I wanna go to some of the brushes um, that I normally use. Now, if I press spacebar again, I get access to my library of uh, just my tools inside 3D Code. And, you know, there's a lot of them, and all of them are very specific for specific things. Uh, but I want to cover some of the ones that I just normally use the most just because they're, they're you know, it's really all you need uh, for the most part. And so let's create a cube here. If you want to create a primitive object, you can actually go to spacebar and there's a uh, objects options here for primitives. And once you click there, it's zoom in here, you can see that my menu up here changed. You can actually create all sorts of, sort of different types of objects here, you know, spheres, cubes, um, lattices, gears, you know, all this stuff. And this is stuff that you can just experiment with, but I want to create a cube. So I just click cube. And you can see that the cube right now is sort of grayed out. And that means that this is just a visual representation of where it's going to be placed. So we don't have a cube yet. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this up. So I'm going to click my little green cube here. I'm just going to expand that just to make it bigger. Now, 3D code, uh, this is something to keep in mind is that every time you create a new object, the bigger I make it, so if I make it this big, um, 3D code is going to make it with a very high poly count. If I make it smaller, the smaller I make it, the smaller the poly count. So be careful with how big and how small you make it, because that's going to determine how much polys um, you're going to get from this cube. I'm just going to make it this big, right? And it's going to press enter. And that's going to be placing my cube there. As you can see, it has a different color. And if you go down here, you're going to see that it says triangles, uh, almost 4 million. And that's going to be your count. And I usually don't work this high, but as you can see, if I rotate here, you're going to see that I'm, I'm getting some sort of weird stuff happening over here. And that means that because I'm still in add an object mode, it's still placing another cube on top of this one. So if I move this, you're going to see that I'm getting this other cube here. So this is not place. This is just a presentation, but I already got my cube. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to press bar, and I'm just going to pick my build tool here just so I can get rid of that. And so now, as you can see, I have almost 4 million here. And I don't, I don't want to have that many. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press spirit bar again, go to resample. And here, you're going to see this is going to be my total polys that I have at the moment. I'm going to bring it down. I'm just going to scroll through this here. That's what I have at about a million. And just press enter there. Now, as you can see down here, I have 1.2 million. Right. That's how I want to sort of resample. If I get something too big, I can decrease the amount of uh, all these um, using the resample there. All right. So let's go through some of these tools here. So I'm going to place spacebar. And the first one is going to be built. Right. And this is very, a very standard brush. And every time you select a voxel tool here, so in this case, build, you can actually change the way the brush is, right? So right now I have this sort of really round, normal brush similar to Photoshop. But I could pick any of my brushes here, and that will get applied to the build effect. So um, if I select that one, and I just mostly using Mostly using the just the normal standard way of doing it. Go back there. Um, so my my build brush here is, is just a very basic, a very basic uh, brush there. Now with every tool, if I press the letter E, get this sort of menu, and this is how I am going to use that specific tool. Now, these ones are over here are mostly like just like normal brushes. You can see they all have like a different, you know, some of them taper, some of them have a little bit of opacity, um, you know, that sort of thing. So depending on what you're wanting and how you want them to get applied, you can select these right here. Uh, if I want this sort of dotted stroked, uh, this, this sort of make this sort of dot. I press E again. You know, this one has a little bit of of uh, change depending on how much I press in my in my tablet. So the more I press, the bigger and the thicker it goes, right? Uh, this one, for example, has a it has the same thickness, but it actually, the more I press, the more strength it has the brush there. Right. 
I like this one the most because I, I do like to control the size of the brush by pressing the brackets on my keyboard, right? And as you can see, let me make this a little bit bigger. As you can see that there's like a red line, this red line here, and I'm doing this with the right click. So this is actually the intensity of the brush here. And you can see, or the depth, they call it here in 3 but you can see here on depth, how it changes when I'm changing this. So if I go really almost flat, it's not that intense. But if I go really high, now it's it's more intense, right? So you can play with the intensity by just right clicking and dragging um, inside the brush there. Okay. So pressing E again. Now the other ones that I use the most are these ones right here. And these are great because I actually can use more, like for example, like a rectangle. You're gonna see this better later, but a rectangle just creates, you know, rectangle there. Right, just like that. I could just, just use the rectangle to to push and pull from there, like that, right? And there's this other one, so there's this lasso one that's more freestyle. Um, you know, circles. You go to the top here, just create circles there. Um, so, you know, this, this gives you a lot of options to, um, to pretty much determine how you want to use that brush. Now, sometimes here you want to use ignore back faces. For example, here, if you go to the back here. Here. Go to the, to the side here. You can see that we get this stuff here that happened on the other side. And that is because we didn't have ignore back faces on. So if we have that on and we do this, only going to happen at the front. It's not going to happen in the back here. So for this stuff, both of it's very important to have this on just so you don't mess the other side of the, of the match as well. Great. So that's the build tool is it's very simple. You know, you get, you can actually do a lot of stuff with the build tool. Um, you can get a lot of detail in, depending on, of course, on what sort of detail you're looking for, but uh, you can do a lot of stuff with the build tool. Now, the other one is going to be Chisel. So I like Chisel a lot because, especially when I'm doing like architectural stuff, uh, let me actually create a new cube. I'm just going to hide this layer, create a new layer, put a primitive, create a new cube there. Let's press enter there. And let's resample that. That a little bit smaller. And so let's grab chisel. And so chisel, I like to use it for like corners and edges like this, because with this, you can actually sort of, I'm not beveling, but I'm sort of flattening a little bit that edge just so we get a little bit of a bevel in there. And I can sort of break out a little bit of that super hard edge. Right, I can sort of break a little bit of that sort of edge in there. Let me get rid of my grip there. Sort of work the corner. I can break it up even more if I need to. Right, so I can make this sort of chisel type of uh, effect using that brush. Right, so pretty useful. Um, 
The other one that we can use a lot is the it's a lot either the rapid or the absolute. Um, and this is great for breaking up a little bit of the uh, grain here. Now, when you're dealing with brushes, if if you just use the brush normally, right? You get something like this. Let me decrease the depth a little bit. Right? But if I press control as I'm using the brush, I get the negative effect. So instead of going out, I'm going in by pressing control. You have to make sure that you hold it. For example, I could make like this, like maybe this is like a wall that's sort of I like concrete and sort of broke up. Right? So now this is like the concrete part. This could be like bricks and stuff, like exposed brick. Right? So I'm I'm doing that by pressing control and getting that negative negative effect. Now if I press shift, I go directly into smooth um brush. You can see this sort of gets green. And so if I press shift and paint, now it's gonna sort of smooth everything out. You can always, you know. Go to your um, to your tools here or here and just grab the smooth one. Just you know, smooth it out. But I, I personally like to just press shift and smooth things out when I need to. And then just um, release shift and then I go back to to my brush that I had before, right? So flatten here. All right, so you can smooth that out and continue working that. All right. So yeah, so that's absolute flatten. Um build. Um build up is pretty similar to build. Build the brush here. Uh, it's pretty standard, pretty similar as well. But again, you can pick other types of brushes. So for example, I could grab this sort of diamond one like, just get something like that. Right? Or I could grab the diamond, but also I want the, I want to use it as a square. Just click and drag, get that. Or I could grab like a some sort of texture like brush here. Much. You yeah, sort of use that to create that texture using the build up one. Now this already could be like some sort of like mountains or something. Right? So um builders is pretty similar to build. Uh, it's pretty standard. Um but you can combine it with like a texture type of alpha or like a rock or something. And that way you can sort of uh build up that texture using a brush. Right, so that's using sort of like a rocky texture there. Now, the other one is the uh, Vox height here, and this is pretty cool because this will sort of, you know, you, you get this sort of effect here that the sort of cutting away from the form. Right, you see I made, made a hole there. The cool thing about this is that if I press control, it will actually bring back some of that. You can sort of undo it. So I use it a lot to create sort of like chips and, and damage and, and break things up a little bit on the, the uh, structures and stuff. I can, for example, do something like this. And then pressing control can bring some of that back.
and sort of make it like it's sort of crack in that area there. So I go back and forth from, you know, from painting to pressing control and, and doing um, all the other normal stuff. But I used to actually use this a lot. Um, it's so okay, I can create this sort of broken up effect. Maybe something like that. All right, so now we got this set of, and it's, it, it looks very organic and pretty natural. Um, and I find that it's easier to do it this way when it looks better than if I try to actually create the crack myself. If I were to like literally just try to do a crack by myself like this, it's not going to look as, as natural as if I were to do it this way. So that's the uh, Voxide. Um, the other one is we're going to go to adjust here and uh, let's start with cutoff. Now cutoff is pretty much that if you want to cut off just some area of the mesh. Now for this, I am going to go to my orthographic view here. And if I press, if I'm rotating and I press shift, it's going to snap to the view that I'm close with, right? So if I want the top here, I press shift, and then it's going to snap the top view there. And I'm going to select cutoff, press E. I'm going to use my rectangle version here. I'm really just going to cut away the stuff that I don't need. I'm just going to sort of clean up these cube here. It's going to go to the side here, do the same thing here for the top. Now I have a clean cube. Let's go back to perspective. And so with the cutoff, I can actually you know, just cut things up. And I don't need to use the square. I can use the lasso tool. Just do something like this, for example. Right? And I cut that off. Maybe here. Cut that off. Cut that off. Right, so a uh, pretty powerful tool to uh, clean things up in, instead of uh, cut things as you need to. Here, go back to perspective. So that's a cutoff tool. Um, and the other one is pose. This is another pretty cool one. Uh, let's go back to orthographic here. Go to the side view here. And pose, I can actually make a selection. So. Let's say I grab my rectangle here. I can grab this and I can actually move this and stretch it and make it bigger like so. And I can edit the form by using pose. Right? Go for example, go to here. One thing I want to do um, every time I do this is actually go to my options here and reset axis. That way the axis are to reset it and they're facing the right way. And so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Maybe like so. I'm going to clear selection. And I'm going to select... Actually, this right here. Reset axis, make this bigger. Down. Clear selection. Let's select everything here. Reset axis and then move this up. So, clear selection. 
So now, as you can see, I can start creating sort of like a column type of structure here uh, by just using that tool by itself. Right? So this is extremely powerful to create like the main shapes of structures and, and buildings and stuff like that. Um, and things very beautiful. And once you have this, then you can start sort of, you know, you want to sort of destroy it and, you know, make it a little bit more um, just broken up type of thing. Um, then you can start, you know, shipping away and and uh, building and sculpting that out. Cool. So that is uh, Pose, very powerful. And I use that all the time. Um, the other one is uh, transform, and this is just that transform. If you want to edit something um, on that layer, you know you have your normal transformations, right? Um, you know, moving and rotating and scaling and all that normal, um, normal stuff that you get for transform and move. Um, it's another pretty powerful one, and this one will use a Sort of like a soft selection, and I'm just gonna grab just a normal brush here. I can actually just tweak things. Grab this one here, and let me use this one here. Ah, little bricks up there. But I can actually just move my geometry as I need to. I don't use it a lot for moving the geometry. What I use it for is in combination of a rock texture. So I'm just gonna grab like a rock alpha, a rock alpha that I have here. Um, either one is fine, but actually, oops. I can actually go here and very slightly with my rock texture, grab another one. But I use that to create the texture. I need to move this very slightly. I kind of go too crazy because then I'll get something like that. I just want to be slightly, just using it slightly to create that sort of a uh, Rock texture. Now, of course, that's going to depend on what brush you have selected. You can say you can you can get very very creative with the way you use it. depending on the brush or uh, the brush that you have pretty much selected. So let's use the uh, move uh, texture. Okay, so let's talk about uh, stencils here, which is another, the other big thing that I use uh, Plutico for. And so I'm just gonna have a cube here. Uh, let me bring my grid back so I know how big this is. And I want to create some sort of a flat, um, sort of like a flat cube here. I press enter there. Now stencils are, let me grab a build tool here. Uh, stencils, uh, again, you can find them here. Uh, stencils, and you get your library here. This is just some of the ones that I've already created, uh, but you can create your own, import them here. And stencils are gonna use a very, very, very similar or pretty much work the same way as displacements where uh, value information, you know, black and whites are gonna represent height in your in your uh, model here, right? So, um, you know, have all these pictures and different, uh, just different um, types of, um, stencils that I've created in Photoshop and just import them here. Now, the way to use this, um, the way that I use this is that I normally use it in orthographic because you don't want any 
um, you really don't want any perspective to mess up your projection of the stencil, right? So I'm here at the top here, orthographic view. We, we know that by the blue color of the background. And I'm going to go to my library. And just select uh, one of them. So let's just say one that's pretty simple. Um, actually, go here and select this one here, just the first one. Now, once I click that, it's going to go to the stencil mode um, and you're going to get this sort of layer on top where you can see the shape of it sort of like repeated. Now, I normally don't do this tiling. If I go up here, I just click tiling and it's just one here because I normally just don't use the tiling. And you will get this sort of green dot right in the middle. If you right click on it, you're going to get these options. And this is for you to pretty much place your stencil um, on top of your image. So you're sort of like projecting the shape on top. And these corners are for scaling. You can scale in here or stretch it out. Um, you can move it around, place it where you want to. Right. Once you once you place it, you can actually uh, just click this X button and it will get rid of um, your options there. So now you won't be able to move it. And so now you can use pretty much any, any brush here to apply that. Um, but the ones that I use the most is mostly built, part off, um, or absolute. Um, and so if I use the cutoff, I'm gonna press E, I'm gonna select my rectangle here. I'm just gonna click and drag on top here. And what this is gonna do is pretty much gonna delete everything or cut off everything that is not, um, or pretty much everything that is in white on that stencil. And now I only have this set of piece here. So once I get that, I can close here and then I get this set of uh, pieces here. Let me go to perspective here. And now I get this piece. Now I can actually just delete the rest. Right, so I can go to cutoff, just pretty much get rid of everything else. And now I get this piece, right? So if I want to have something a little bit different, let's say go back here. Let's go to build, let's go to autographic. And let's go to the top view here. I'm gonna select the same stencil. I'm gonna place it right in the middle here, scale it a little bit. Like that. And so with the build, if I go to the E option, go to the rectangle, it's gonna click and drag again. And what that's gonna do is sort of indented in there because the color of the shape is black. So it's going to go in to the geometry, not out. Now, the reason is that you see it is not that much, right? Um, you can actually make that a little bit more pronounced by making the brush more intense. If I right click on the brush and I go up here, it's going to be more intense. So now if I click and drag here, Now that it's even more pronounced, the shape there, right? So depending on how intense you have the brush here, it's going to be how intense you want the stencil to be applied to. Now, I don't want this to go into the mesh. I, want, I actually want this shape to go out and up into the, into the mesh. And so what I'm going to do is uh, instead of going into Photoshop and changing the uh, image inverse, I'm going to press Control and click and drag. So it's going to be the opposite. So now if I close this little perspective, now I have it going over the image. And you could do multiple things with this, right? You could do, for example, um, let's go to my transform here. And I don't want this to be so pronounced. Maybe I want something like this, where it's just like a little detail of my structure here. Let's go to orthographic maybe cut away some of these. So let's go to cut off. I only need this part here.
right? Only this is need this to be placed on a wall, maybe repeat it a few times. Just could create some sort of a detail here. And maybe I can go all the way up here. This all the way up here. These here. These here. Right. So now I have this set of pieces that I can put on walls and and have this little detail there. Right. But again, you know, stencils um, could use actually different levels of brightness and darkness. So this is just like a black and white image, like just black and white, just two values. But if I have more values, let's get rid of this one. Let's create a new box here. I'm going to pick my build tool. I'm going to select one that has more values in here. Maybe this one, right? Again, right click. Scale this down, place it right in the middle. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to click and drag with my build tool. So now if I close this, because I have different values on the image, I have different types of heights on the mesh here. Right? So you can create, you know, you can really be really creative in Photoshop and create this sort of um, different assets and details and stuff like that with different types of values to create different types of levels of indentation and heights. And then you can just bring it into 3D code and just click and drag. And then now you have this sort of uh, um, cool asset that you can sculpt on top, create all the details with sculpting and then export that and have your own asset, right? So the 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 options are pretty much you know limitless to be honest. Um, the other thing that you could do with this as well is instead of creating your own, you can actually use pictures. So I have a few here. I don't have the original pictures, but for example, I have um, I collected these. Let me see here. This one. And so this one was from a uh, picture that I found online that I had to edit a little bit because it wasn't completely square and in, in perspective. I sort of did like a quarter of it, fix a quarter, and then I just duplicated it around, mirrored it. But for example, I could grab something like that. Click on drag here. Now I got some really cool design here that I can use. Right, so right now it might be too much of a of an extrusion, right? In there. But now I can grab my transform here, just scale it down just a little bit there. Something like that, right? And now I can actually get rid of get my coat off. And get rid of these areas that I don't need. And I have like a really cool floor design there. Right? Or maybe I could um, let's go back here. I have some other pictures here that I actually got from, from the internet with like some designs on the walls, right? I can stretch this here like this. Make it up a little smaller. Just put that up here. Now I just click and drag. Wait, I have the cutoff tool. Let's go to build. This might be too much, so I'm just gonna decrease the intensity of the brush. Now I get this really nice set of details that I can use for like a like a wall or like a column or something like that that I can bend it and and do all sorts of uh, of things with it. Let's just reduce the density there. But this was actually from a picture, um, or maybe a couple of pictures that I sort of put together to create the the same the sort of a uh, pattern here. And now I can sort of get this amount of detail that. If I were to sculpt this, it would have taken me for like ever, right? So um, 
so yeah, so you can either create your own, use your pictures, uh, just got to make sure that they're pretty clean in terms of like the values. So they're pretty clear and that way it will, it will sort of work. Cool. So yeah, that's another way to create, um, to create just assets with, uh, stencils. Now let's create a new file here. Go to Voxel Copying, just as cube here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Now let's put a lot of this stuff together, right? So let's actually, um, last thing I want to show you is sort of how you can use all these things together and create some, some things. And also uh, the um, symmetry um, option here. Now I am going to work on my orthographic here. I want to make some sort of column like uh, piece, something easy and, and easy to understand. Now to enable symmetry, if I press S, it's going to bring my symmetry option here. Now right now enable symmetry is on, but I don't have any of the axis enabled, so you won't see any symmetry. As soon as I start, get a closer look here. If I press the X axis, you're going to see that I have this plane here. That means that it's going to be symmetry on, on X axis. So if, if I do something here, it's going to happen on this other side here. If I do Y, it's going to be up and down and Z the other way. So right now I just want the X and the Z, but not the Y, right? So now everything I do here, so for example, if I go here, And everything I do here, it's going to happen in all four corners. So that's sort of like what I want to do. I'm going to go to the side here and I am going to grab my transform. Let's stretch this a little bit. Now, every time you do some sort of transform transformation like this, or you do something similar to this, you're going to get this sort of non-uniform um, red option here. You want to get rid of that. Um, and so the way to do that is, um, let's make sure that this is not too high. So right now it's 2.3 million. Let's just resample this to like a million. And now if I right click on this, on my layer, I'll go to global space. That sort of resets everything. And now I don't have that, um, warning there. So now with the symmetry on, right? I have it on for process, enable symmetry. I'm going to grab my cutoff tool. Make sure I have my rectangle here. Maybe I can grab something like this. Grab my pose and maybe scale something here. Go to the side. From my cutoff tool, a little bit of here. Actually, want to have some sort of a circle, like a, a cylinder type of shape in the middle here. So maybe I'll grab the post here. I'll bring this up. But and I actually want to bring a primitive. Let me bring a cylinder. And let's, since I have symmetry on, it's going to create four cylinders, right? That's something I don't want. So let's make sure that our symmetry is off for this. Let's make sure that. We scale this. You get rid of my grid here. Bring that all the way up.
So everything that you do on the same layer is sort of gonna get merged with the X16 mesh already. Just gonna press enter there. So right now I don't have that cube shape in the center. I have this. Let's go build. Now I have some sort of a cylindrical shape in the center there. So let's bring back my symmetry. I could grab my S look here. Maybe start creating some sort of uh, shapes here. Grab my pose. Maybe this, I want to make it bigger. Make sure that I reset the axis. that there so I cut off and cut the bottom just so it's all flat like that I could grab a stencil so if I go to the stencils here maybe I grab something just something simple here I have symmetry on, so I'm only need to worry about one half. Now I could grab my build tool, grab the brush, and now I can sort of go in here and Sort of cut away that shape. Let's close that. So now I got that sort of shape in there. I could grab my flatten or my chisel. Sort of flatten that out a little bit. Right. I can start adding detail using stencils as well in like specific areas. I could maybe, let's say I have this one here. And to actually rotate this, move that to the side here. Close that. Actually, we're going to use the build and the rectangle here. Just going to click and drag there. Now I get this sort of a shape here on this side. perfecting mode just so we can see a little bit better so if you if you know you're gonna stay with this symmetry you can go to show symmetry plane off that means they're you don't see them but they're actually still apply so whatever you do on one side uh sometimes they could get in the way and get a little bit distracting but you can see how that uh that's a little place there um 
But yeah, so you can, you know, you can keep adding details there. So for example, I could go to absolute here, maybe add some details here like that. something like that maybe here at uh, a little bit of these so now the other thing is if you go to the symmetry we have the symmetry type x y and z which is the one that we're using right now but we can go to radio symmetry and now um, we can actually select how many uh, repeated steps uh, we want. Right now it's four. So if I do, you know, you're going to see it in four areas. But well, we could go like, for example, let's say 32. And now we can actually sort of create some really cool this might be too much. Let's do 16. Let's do the build tool. I'm just gonna do something crazy here just so you can see the effect, but oops, not the not this. We're actually gonna use a brush here. Right? So you can create some really cool shapes. And, and experiments using the radio. The radio effect here. Right? I love the radio wagon. So you can get something really cool looking by, you know, by just spending just a few minutes in there. Um, and that way it's. It looks, it looks, it looks pretty cool. Um, and you can flatten this out a little bit using the chisel. Right. But this will only work on like cylindrical shapes, right? If I try to do it here on the square shapes, it's just not going to look that great. Uh, but for Cylindrical shapes, it works really, really nice. And, uh, you know, what I do is like once I get like the major stuff in, so let's just say this is my major shape, you know, I would do stuff up here. And maybe I'll keep these pretty simple just so we can have some eye rest in terms of detail. Um, then I can just get rid of my symmetry. And I can really just go in with the previous uh, brushes. And if I want to, break this up, you know, or make some damage, you know, I can just go in here and um, just really break the stuff um, just so it looks nice on some areas and some areas it just doesn't look, um, doesn't look as great. Here, break this up a little bit. You can experiment with all the different brushes that they have. Um, and it's something that you're going to have to sort of find out and see which ones work best for you for what you're trying to do. Um, but this is this is a pretty, uh, you know, a pretty basic rundown of most of the things or all the things really that I use for, for, uh, for sculpting here. Um, Sometimes I play with like some of this actual stuff, but it's like really experimental and pretty specific. Uh, for the most part, you know, I, I use most of this stuff. Um, but the last thing actually that I want to show you is this uh, to the plain one. Uh, let's actually get rid of this. Let's create a new one here. Just do a cube here. Just make that a little bit 
flat here. Now this uh, this to the paint uh, is it to the paint? One second. Yes, this plain uh, tool here. Again, this is again specific, but just I want to make some sort of like wood walk or something like that. Um, you're gonna notice that when you select the plane um, tool here, you're gonna get this sort of square here. And what it does is you have to um, select the angle of the plane. So for example, let's say I, I have like, you know, I say I want this sort of angle here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Double space. Plane here. Go to orthographic view here. to the top. So if I select, if I right click on top of the angle that I want, right? So depending on the angle that I'm clicking at on this geometry, it's going to be the angle of the, of this square that you see. I'm just going to go to the top and maybe you just right click on top here. And now Like my brush, I have a square brush here. And let's make this a little bit bigger. Now you can see that I can actually paint shapes in that direction, right? So I could do something like this, right? Uh, and now I can. Let's go to my side view here. Right click on this angle of the face. And I can do something like this. Right. So now I have this sort of, you know, I can literally just create geometry based on the angle that I have this set up. Now I could actually just go to transform here. Maybe delete this box since we don't need it. Let's go to pose, select these, reset axis, make them a little bit thicker. Move them to this side here. Their selection. Let's make these a little bit thicker as well. So now I can create some sort of boardwalk or a base of it with that. And now I can literally just go in and start sculpting. My brush got so small right now. There you go. And I can just go in instead of sculpt my sort of planks using that as a base. Right? So, um, so this, this is another one, the plain one that I, that I use, uh, you know, for, again, is very specific, but, um, cause it only restrains you for the, uh, angle that you're, that you're pretty much, uh, um, looking at. 
and setting up that plane source. But you can get some really interesting stuff um, using using that. Um, so yeah, so let's say um, last thing is that you know how how can you you know bring this out? So what I normally do is uh, we can actually delete this layer. So I'm just gonna right click and delete. We only have this one for this. So let's say this is my asset. You're done sculpting. You did all the details and everything is ready. Right now it's 4.8, which I think is pretty big. And so what I like to do is before I normally work from 1 million to 2 million uh, when I do the high res sculpt. Um, again, I don't go crazy on the details. I just want to have a few details here and there. And once I'm ready, I actually bring this way lower. So if I go to resample, I want to bring this to like half a million, close there, between 400, 600, depending on the asset. Um, but right now, you know, we just did that and we didn't really lose barely any detail that we already had. And we didn't have a lot of details, but you know, we kept the main shape. We kept the main shape. We still have all the details that we put in. And we, you know, we may even maybe go a little bit lower, maybe like 400,000. And it's still holding up. And then from here, I can actually just export this as an OBJ. So if I right click on it, I go to export, export selected objects, which is the objects that are going to be in that layer, right? Or multiple layers if you selected a few. And now you can save it as an OBJ bring that into Blender, you know, decimate it over there if you need to, if you want to, and then do your stuff from over there. Um, so that's really my process for 3D code, what I normally use. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do in here. Uh, you can actually bake the high-res uh, details into a low-res uh, model, uh, texture and painting, but I, I don't really do all that stuff in here. Um, um, but this is just mostly most of the stuff that I normally use for for uh for 3D code. Um well yeah, I hope this gives you guys a sort of base um to at least start playing with it and experimenting with it. Uh, I really like this program, it's really, really fun. And you can really go crazy with um, you know, just concepting stuff um by utilizing all the tools and all the stuff that 3D code has to offer. Um but yeah, I really hope that you guys uh, learned something. And um, if you got any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.